Hello everybody. Today we are starting the course on dynamics and control and we are going to start in the module one which is about systems and signals, some examples. Um, as you remember my name is Pedro Albertos from the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. So this is the first module and you can see here the context of the course and we are going to discuss what are dynamic systems and what is the concept of uh, feedback. So uh, initially um, dynamics means history. If something has no history it's just static, it's immediate, it's uh, uh, without uh, looking at the past. In a dynamic system, the present behavior depends on the past actions. Um, not necessarily implies movement. Dynamics, of course, in physics means uh, dynamics, means uh, movement. But uh, for us, uh, a dynamic system, as you will see later on, doesn't mean that uh, something should be moving. For instance, if you consider a uh, kill, the temperature is changing, nothing is moving, but it's a dynamic system because the temperature inside the kiln depends on the fuel or in the heating we have applied in the time before. So the present behavior depends on the past actions. And we are going to deal with control. What is the meaning of control? Dynamic systems, they can be mm, modified, changing some uh, variables. And then the role of the control is to select which are the actions to get a desired behavior and also to uh, add another subsystem which is the controller which is generating the control actions. And this uh, subsystem has some parameters also, the, the goal of the control is to tune the controller parameters if there are some changes in the process, in the system. Uh, during this course, we are going to use uh, almost as equivalent the concept of uh, system and process. And if there are many processes, we can say sub-processes or components. So control appears in most of the industrial applications. Here you can see a packaging plant with bottles and of course this requires some control. But also in nature, as we said the other day, when you are looking at some birds flying, they are not crashing against the trees, they are not crashing each other, they are uh, interchanging some information and then uh, flying in a um, right way. And also in life, uh, the molecules, they are not randomly uh, connected, they form a system and this, as we will see, also it's uh, also a dynamic system. So control is uh, everywhere not only in nature, but also in uh, human-made systems. For instance, uh, try to uh, get up. If you uh, go down like this, without hands, and then you try to get up, you need some control, otherwise you will be unbalanced and you will fall down. Uh, you have some sensors, your feet, your feet, and you have some actions, your movements. Uh, try to touch your nose. If you are uh, trying to touch your nose, it's very easy. But if you close your eyes and you try to do the same, well, probably you can reach the nose. But uh, you can see that what is very important is that you are following the trajectory and there is a feedback between your movement and the position of the finger uh, to reach the nose. Also, uh, try to catch uh, an object. You have an object here, the glasses, and you try to catch. If you don't have this uh, feedback, you look an, another, to another place, then probably you cannot reach properly the object. So you need a, re a reaction, a feedback, 
between your action and what you are getting. Even most uh, important, uh, try to get uh, a pen in your finger to keep in a vertical position. So this is really a very difficult task. Even you, if you are looking at uh, the control is very difficult. But we have many, many systems which are uh, unstable. For instance, imagine an uh, aircraft. If uh, there is an aircraft flying and there is no control, then by the gravity law, the aircraft will fall down. So you need some uh, actions to keep flying the aircraft or the helicopter or many other unstable uh, processes uh, operating in the right position. So feedback is the key on the behavior of all these activities or all these systems. And this feedback appears in nature, natural systems also in human-made systems and in combined systems. So, feedback is everywhere and control is everywhere. So, let's uh, now consider what is a dynamic system. So, in general, a system is composed by components. There are many sub-processes and they are uh, interacting information among them. Of course, if they are not related, they are not uh, are composing the same uh, system. But in general, they are inter interchanging some in information and then uh, also between the, them and the uh, environment and they form a dynamic system. Consider, for instance, a balance. If you have a balance like this one and you move up or down one stream, uh, in this case, the movement of the other stream uh, is uh, always proportional depends on the length of the bar. So the system is static, even it can be moving. And it's static because the position of one extreme is totally determined by the position uh, of the other one, the one we are moving. And it doesn't depend if we are going up or down. If we are in this position, the uh, other extreme is always in that position. If we low down this, the other one will go up and the relationship between them is uh, expressed by this equation which is, uh, means that uh, y and u are proportional. On the other hand, consider a running car. If you are looking at the car, uh, the position of the car and the speed of the car uh, is not depending instantaneously on the way you are driving. It depends on your past position and depends on many other external uh, circumstances. Where do you come from, where you are going, and uh, what are the actions you are taking. So this is a complex uh, dynamic system. Let's see some examples in nature. <clears throat> if you open a window and you can see uh, the rain, and there is a cycle of the water. So the water mainly stays on the sea, but from the sea, by evaporation, is going to the clouds. From the clouds, it's uh, raining uh, to the earth, earth, and then uh, to rivers, and is flowing to the sea again. So there is a cycle, and this is perfectly in uh, stable control, most of the cases. In some cases, there are some strong disturbances, and then the cycle is uh, uh, not so nicely. But, but uh, in general, there is uh, a feedback and if there are more clouds, then you get more rain. If there are more rain, then the rivers are uh, more uh, full and then uh, all this is uh, interacting. <clears throat> what are the signals or the variables that we can consider here? Of course, the flow of the river, the level of the sea, um, the size of the clouds, all these are signals that we are interested in. We can see also that there are some mountains, but the mountains are not variable, they are fixed. So we will not consider these as uh, signals because they are fixed. <coughs> Let's uh, now consider the, the human body, and in particular the glucose uh, regulation in blood. We know that there are many uh, uh, subsystems interacting in that, many uh, viscera. Uh, the, the blood uh, glucose 
the, the glucose which is in, in blood is uh, circulating and is going to all the organs in the human body. But there are some places where the glucose is generated in the stomach when we are eating uh, food and there is uh, some places where we are consuming in all the cells, moving, uh, doing some actions but also in all the other activities of the organs and should be some kind of control because otherwise when we were eating too much the level of uh, the glucose will raise if we were without, uh, if we were starving without eating for a long time then the level of the glucose will go uh, very low and then there are some uh, regulation which is the pancreas generating the insulin which is the uh, liver which uh, stores uh, some uh, glucose uh, in the form of uh, glucanon for um, future use and also there are, uh, all this is controlled mainly by the uh, brain which is uh, giving some signals to the different uh, organs in how to act and in this case which are the signals, which are the variables we can of course consider the sugar uh, or blood uh, or glucose uh, level in blood but we can also consider the uh, energy we are consuming, the food we are eating, um, the um, <coughs> removing uh, by the kidney or many other variables acting on this uh, process. In general I have considered here the example of the <coughs> glucose but uh, homeostasis and feedback are uh, in all our body and there is a lot of feedback for all these actions. We have seen at the beginning motor functions like standing up, to walk, to grasp an object, to read a book, all these uh, need feedback. But also many other unconscious, uh, unconscious uh, activities um, require the feedback like uh, breathing, digesting or deciding to go to some place. <coughs> If we consider, for instance, the temperature regulation in our body, then we know that the temperature is kept uh, constant, almost constant, around 37 degrees, more or less. But we know that not all the, the parts of the body keep the temperature in the same constant value. For instance, sometimes we have the feet uh, cold or the hands, uh, but we never will have the brain Cold. The brain should uh, keep always the same temperature. So there is uh, different kinds of control. It's a fine control for the brain temperature. There is a loose control for the temperature in the hands or in the feet. And it depends on the part of the body. The control is more precise or less precise. This has also application in human-made uh, control systems because not always we want to keep uh, to get the same performance in all the activities. Uh, here you can see for instance that uh, <coughs> the, there are many sensors of the temperature in all the different uh, viscera and also there is a local control but uh, there is a central control which is in the brain. This kind of uh, control structure will be very useful in human-made uh, systems because we will have local controls for uh, distributed activities but a central control, in this case the brain, who is uh, taking care of the behavior of the whole system, in th that case the temperature in the body. And which are the signals here? Of course the temperature in the different parts, of course uh, the different activities that we do to increase the temperature like moving or generating some, uh, consuming some energy and all these are interacting as shown in this graph. But here we were talking about physical systems in the body but also psychological processes have feedback. If you try to do some action you need some actuator, is the motivation processes. You are motivated to grasp something. But then uh, there is an external world and you are acting on this external world and you are sensing, the sensor are the cognitive processes. You realize if you have uh, grasped the object or not 
And depending on that, you take some action. You move in this way, you move in another way, or you do whatever you want, depending on your uh, goals and your ideas. And the goals are uh, controlled by the control state or the control system, uh, which are the emotional processes. Not everybody reacts in the same way, uh, giving, uh, taking the same information. And this depends very much on the emotional process. If you are happy, if you are uh, unhappy, if you are um, <coughs> tired or something, uh, in, depending on your situation, you will react in a way or another. But there is a, a <coughs> loop also here, a feedback. And which are the signals, the variables? Well, in this case, unfortunately, we cannot measure like temperatures with thermometers. We cannot measure like flows with uh, flow meters. Uh, here we are talking about uh, feelings, about uh, <coughs> uh, images that are taken by our uh, sensing uh, uh, elements like the eyes or the ears or uh, the touch. Uh, and this is much more difficult to uh, measure and to express and to model. So in this kind of processes, mainly we will use uh, mm, qualitative uh, variables. So feedback in social systems also, not just considering one person like uh, in the previous examples. Uh, normally we are acting to achieve some goals and we are expecting also the external reaction. If I'm doing that, I'm expecting that you are following the course and you are enjoying the course. And I will be very happy if I get some feedback from you saying this is good, this is not good, I should uh, say that before that and something like that. So, uh, in general, uh, most of our actions are reactive. We do that because we are getting some information and we consider that the best is to do that uh, other uh, action. So, we can conclude that life without feedback would be very boring. I have in mind some jokes, but let me uh, let this uh, uh, out of the talk, uh, just showing that if you are doing something and you don't get uh, feedback, then in many cases mm, your interest is lost or you have less interest. <coughs> so, what have we, uh, we seen today? We have seen uh, many systems in nature and we have uh, uh, analyzed how we can find them and study and which are the attached variables. So, tomorrow or in our next uh, session, we will see another kind of uh, examples of systems, artificial systems, which are the components, which are the goals and which are the benefits that we can get from them. Thank you very much. <coughs>